This is Investor Ideas and we're here at Money 2020 2015 in Las Vegas at the Venetian Hotel. Money 2020 is one of the largest events covering payments and financial services innovation. And what better place to host this than Las Vegas? So if you want to have some insight into the future of money from mobile payments to biometrics to Bitcoin, this is the place to be. Good morning and welcome to the biometrics panel. I've got a quick question for everybody in this room. How many in this room have some sort of biometric authentication on their phone? Raise your hands. Oh my, that's just about everyone. Now if I would have asked that question two years ago, how many would have raised their hands? <laughs> Quite a change. Biometric technology is more popular than ever before. New advances in biometrics have allowed for massive prolifer proliferation. And all the big players are now involved. Apple, Microsoft, Samsung, Google, MasterCard, USAA, Toyota, Visa, Facebook, Bank of America, Ford, TD, Scotia, Royal, CIBC, General Motors, Alibaba, Amex, Qualcomm, NTT, PayPal, Intel, and on and on and on. This is a global phenomenon. And actually in North America, we are behind. Biometrics are also being used to speed travelers through airport security, facial recognition in schools, thumb scan from My Health Club, iris recognition on door locks, behavioral biometrics online, and multimodal authentication on Windows 10 devices. Every industry is now being affected by biometrics. Payments, we know, but healthcare is also huge. Law enforcement, banking, enterprise, that's a big market. Border control, national ID programs, government programs, automotive, not to mention BYOD, BYOI, wearables, and the Internet of Things. As data breaches continue to rise, and as the password continues to prove totally ineffective, and as the public yearns for a better, safer, and more convenient way forward, almost every bank, retailer, payment company, and credit card company is looking at how to incorporate biometrics into their future. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome to Biometric Identity and its applications in financial services and payments. My name is Peter O'Neill, and I am the president of Find Biometrics and Mobile ID World. We are the leading resource for biometrics, identity, and mobility, and I've been reporting and covering this industry for the past 15 years. Since this panel, pa since this, panel the same time last year, the biometrics and finance market has evolved significantly. The world's most prominent mobile concerns have biometrically enabled M payment platforms, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, and Alipay. Major payment networks have integrated biometrics into their offerings, and banks have embraced biometrics for phone, mobile, and ATM banking. Today, we have a very hot topic, and we are blessed with a fantastic panel, so let's jump right in. First question to the panel. Is the panel seeing a dominant biometric modality in the modalities face, fingerprint, voice, etc. in financial services? Are all modalities competing or are certain modalities proving to find certain niches? And I'm going to ask Connor if he could start this one off, please. Sure. Thank you, Peter. And thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, speak today. Um, <coughs> The company I work for, Down, uh, we look at it as it's about authenticating the human. There is no one biometric that works for everybody all the time. It's really about um, understanding what works for the, for the user in the environment, what their personal preferences are. So if I, if I think of where we are today and where we've come in the last 10 years in terms of how we interact online and, and how we interact in the real world as well, um, we still use technology that was invented in 1960, which is the password. And, and if you think about it, that's 55 years ago. At this point, most people are looking to retire at 55 or shortly after, yet we still can't seem to retire the password. It's time to move on. Um, and what you're seeing today is a dramatic takeover 
in biometrics as a way to authenticate. What we do today is we still authenticate things, and most of the cybersecurity issues we have in the industry today are because we're authenticating a thing, which is a proxy for a person. We need to actually authenticate the person. And what we believe in is that it's, it's about authenticating that, that person, that human, using attributes that are unique to them, be it their fingerprint, right, as you have in Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and others, or be it their face, their voice, and new biometrics that are coming out every day, like, like iris and uh, periocular vein and things like that. Um, and so that's our fundamental belief. Um, I think to, we, today on the stage we have two of the most uh, technologically advanced and innovative financial services companies in the world, both USAA and MasterCard. And they're deploying systems that use finger, face, and voice, and they're authenticating. And certainly I'll let them speak through, but I know from what you see in the industry from, from both of them that they're getting tremendous feedback from users around the, the actual acceptance of this, these technologies. Um, I think it's fair to say that in USAA, they had in their focus groups four to five people preferred biometrics over a simple pin because it was just much better and much easier. And so we continue to put barriers in front of people with old technology, and biometrics allows us to do that to make a frictionless or almost frictionless experience for users. Um, but the key to that is providing them with the choice that they need to, to authenticate instead of mandating one solution over everything else. Rick, can I get your take on that? Uh, yeah, I would, I would agree with uh, Connor. Uh, we offer up a variety of biometrics on our platform. Uh, the predominant modality is, is fingerprint. Um, it is the most ubiquitous form that can be used, whether you know, it doesn't require the lighting, it doesn't require, it doesn't care what the background noise is. Uh, but there are scenarios where you can't use fingerprint as well. Um, within our uh, footprint, uh, we had Apple Pay come into marketplace. Um, right after we launched um, Face and Voice, and the, we had several of our members asking for fingerprint because they became acclimated to that means, and we incorporated that into our platform and it's been very successful. Bob? Yeah, I'm gonna continue to keep agreeing. I, I, think, uh, I think it's a wrong question to ask about which modality is gonna win. Um, there's two reasons that it's wrong, first of all, it dismisses the whole idea of layered security. And uh, if you want to get hung up on one performance over another and you don't think about geolocation and device identification and forensics on the device and all the other <laughs> behavioral analytics, all the things that we can do, uh, and you start just basing off one piece against the other, you're actually having the wrong discussion. The other thing is I agree with these two guys very much is that um, we got to make stuff that people will use and has a good consumer experience. And so we have to keep innovating on the, the, uh, the actual modality itself. Sure, uh, my, uh, I found the same thing. So 85% of the consumers we work with in our, our pilots uh, preferred some form of biometrics over passwords. And uh, we also found that when fingerprint was present on a mobile device, that was a dominant factor. But we're a big company, just like every, a lot of other people up here. And we have to solve for the whole world. Not everybody's going to run out and buy an $800 phone or $600 phone. So there's other modalities that we have to have uh, working, in addition to voice, um, fingerprints, and um, what am I missing? Face. Yeah, I should remember that one. <laughs> uh, we're also looking, starting to look at iBane and some other things too. So we're just going to keep on working until we get a lot of really good choices for consumers. Philippe? So oh, maybe what we could have. Had. I think um, today biometric is secure, but it's also very convenient, and probably the modalities that could win in the future are the most convenient. So uh, I mean, today, if you want to authenticate on your mobile phone, because we are not used to, to do that, when you authenticate with your face, generally you take a selfie, so first time you take the selfie uh, this way, afterwards you take selfie this way, because it, it works. And um, you are used to uh, see your face on the phone, but it's not needed to see your face, so it may be transparent. And one day, one day it will be transparent. I mean, you will click on your app, and the app will take your photo without displaying anything. So it's a very convenient modality. Um, voice, for example, you have to pronounce something. It works very well. It's very accurate. But I think one day, people will want really transparent modalities. And I think probably this kind of modalities will win if some modalities will win. And Paul is one of the leaders in the voice area. What are your thoughts here? Well, there is no silver bullet. Um, as Connor said at the beginning, it's about authenticating the human being, not some inanimate object that we hope they might have in their possession. 
And pretty much every business today is multi-channel in operation. They may have call centers, branches, uh, you've got laptops, tablets, phones, uh, etc. So they want to authenticate the human being across all of those channels as conveniently as possible. So I think multimodality is important. Um, obviously, you know, our approach, voice is a, is a key biometric, but our user authentication platform takes in multiple modalities. And most importantly, as I think Bob mentioned, contextual data. So depending on the circumstances, taking other data, such as device or location, something about the transaction, the individual, which really helps support the authentication. And that can change uh, and adapt with every single authentication, which makes it very convenient and also very secure.